Hi everyone, Rick's here, and I thought in this video we would focus on the subject of tonal values. Now, why is that an important subject? Well, I'm going to give you a visual example. Take a look at this drawing right here. And I did that about, I don't know, three years ago. And take a look at this drawing right here, which was done shortly after that drawing right there. Do you see the difference between these two? Which one would you say is a photorealistic drawing as opposed to one not so much? Well, if you picked that one, you'd be correct. And what differentiates this drawing from this drawing? This drawing, I took advantage of the full range of tones available from my graphite and charcoal pencils. This one, not so much. And that is why if you want to draw photorealistically, you need to take advantage of the full range of values that is available to us. And in this video, we're going to focus on that subject. Also, I'm going to show you a little experimentation that I did with uh, Photoshop and how it kind of provided a little bit of, I don't know, cheating? I'll let you be the judge of that. But I think you will find it very interesting what I was able to come up with that you actually can use to help you in translating a reference photo into a photorealistic drawing. So, let's not waste any more time and get right into the discussion. Okay, what I've done here is I've loaded up the reference photo of Robert Downey Jr. as you can see here and this is the reference photo that I'm using uh, in this in my current project. Now I want to show you something very interesting about using Photoshop and you can do this with other uh, photo editing software. My reference photo is in grayscale and in Photoshop you can actually go in and you can change the mode and change it to grayscale if you do not already have it in grayscale such as if you have a color photograph you can have it shown in grayscale before you continue uh, with what I'm going to demonstrate here. What I've done is I've also gone over here and just clicked uh, one of these two squares you see here either one will activate this eyedropper for a cursor and this is the color picker and you can see you get this dialog box that will show up like this right here and I'm gonna to try to see if I can fit it in here without covering the the whole drawing here because I want you to uh, I want you to see you see here's a good place for it okay I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here and what I did is I just click this foreground color square here to bring this up but you could have done the background just as well you get this little eyedropper. Now, I want you to look at these values right here. And most notably, I want you to, to either look at this L value here, or this B value here, or you can look at the RGB, which all three will be the same because I'm dealing with grays, grayscales. Um, if I was dealing with color, then these values can change. You'd have a little more red than green or a little more blue than red or so forth. But in grayscale, all three values will be the same. Whatever it ha one happens to be, all of them will be the same. You can also look at the hex value down here, although I think it will be too confusing for most. So, you know, maybe you just go ahead and ignore that. So either look at this one here or the B here or look at the RGB values here. So in this case we'll call this 152. Now 
by holding my left mouse button down you can see that it takes a sample of where that dropper is and as I move the dropper look how these values are changing now to give you reference I'm going to go to this area that is completely black it looks like the darkest area right here you'll notice that everything zeroed out so it's clear that black the blackest black is going to give you a value of zero now if I go to let's say a white area here the max value you're going to get is 100 for the L and the B or 255 for the RGB so for RGB it's 0 to 255 that's your range 0 being black 255 being white and your B and L values is from 0 to 100 where 0 is black and 100 is the brightest and so any value in between 0 and 100 or 0 and 255 as respects the RGB values um, is going to be your um, shades of tone in between black to white okay so let's say we go into the shaded area on the side of his face and you'll notice that the the L and B area averages anywhere around let's say right down here the lower part of the right side of his face okay the value from 0 to 100 will say this is about 35 percent because it's it's going anywhere from 32 to 38 so we'll just say this is 35 percent or for RGB we'll just give it like you know 85 to 90 somewhere around there it you just kind of move this around and you kind of I just kind of get the average personally myself I like looking at the B and the L because it just gives you the one value makes it pretty easy from 0 to 100 so we're gonna say here for example that this area here from 0 black to white 100 we get about oh, 33 34 okay so what we want to you want to see is this darker than say this part of the face well clearly it is even though if you looking at this you might say well it looks the same but this is actually lighter because now we're in the oh it looks like the 45s to 50 area here as com compared to when it was down here in the 35 area so this is darker than this right here and so when you are um, looking to shade the face here you might add a little more graphite a little more darker tone to this area of the face than you would up here now what would make this darker than this being it's the left side of the face this would tell me that the light is somewhere up here coming down in this direction from upper right to lower left making this the darkest area of the face here and lighter here and the lightest would be right there where you have this reflection or call it highlights if you like now I'm going to press the left mouse button down again so I can move this and you can see the values change again so when we move into the middle of the forehead notice now that we're dealing with oh 68 to 70 and then as we move over to the right side this area right here is even lighter because now we're kind of in 80 and then we come over here and notice it drops back down to 70 so you know that here you have 70 here you have a lighter area that's 80s then you're back down to 70 again so that's telling me that this and this is the same tone and then over here same thing same tone and then you come over here now it's down to the 50 high 40s and then as I go over to all the way to near his hair it's dropped down into the high 30s and then as I go down here it's down getting down to the mid 30s the low 30s it's getting really dark it's now in the 20s along 
the very edge of his face. Notice the pupil of the eye is going to be almost pitch black. We have a value of 4 or 5 from 0 to 100, 0 being black. So you know you're, that's going to be one of your darkest areas there. But notice that the eyebrows, which looks black to us, is not at 8, but it's more around, oh, 15 to 20. So it is not as dark as the pupil, even though just by looking at it, you might think, well, it's black and this is black, but it is a lighter shade of black, you might say. So this is good to know. You don't need to make your eyebrows here as black as the pupil is going to be slightly lighter. This may be the difference from me using a charcoal pencil for example for the pupil and then maybe I'll use my 9XXB for the eyebrows. Here in the nose for example we can look here on this side of the nose and we can see that we're running at 40 then it runs up to 60s then it gets brighter to 70s, then it goes low 70 here, so we got high 70 there, low 70, we're getting darker again. And it's pretty even around here, and then it's starting to hit a little bit on the high 70. So pretty much this tone right here is pretty close to being the same. Notice I don't get a whole lot of deviation. But now it's starting to, let's see, we start getting over to the right side of the face and it's starting to darken up just a little bit here. So we can see this is darker here, only mildly so, than here. But definitely this is a lot lighter than here. See the big difference? So by using this tool, for example, in your editing, your, your uh, photo editing software, if you're not sure as to whether an area is darker than another or whether it's the same because of the optical illusion effect that I showed in my last video. Uh, if you haven't seen it I would highly recommend you take a look at that video. You can use this tool to help you uh, determine instead of squinting for example with the, uh, the value tone chart. Now here this nose area for example if you look at the nose area here, okay, see so we got like, I don't know, 46 to 49, so, you know, let's just call that 47. Is that the same as the other side here? Oh, no, look, it goes all the way up to, you know, 60, um, 68, let's say. And right next to it, if we go from there to right here, you'll notice this is lighter because now we're heading to 73. Right here, this area, wow, that's a lot brighter. That's a highlight, 85, 86. And yet that highlight, by the way, is much brighter than this little highlight right here. Okay, let's call that like 75. And then we'll call this one here 80. Okay, so it's a little brighter here than it is here. How about this highlight right here? Okay, clearly this is the same as this right here it's the same okay so you'll make that the same is it the same as the white of the eyes not so white is it notice that the eye tone runs about oh 67 68 somewhere around there 65 okay what else is that same tone as the white of the eye well let's see it would look like the forehead perhaps let's see that's 70 73 and here was oh 62 65 somewhere around there okay it's just just barely a little lighter than the forehead but yet it's the, what we call the white of the eye so anyway uh, I hope you found that interesting now I'm going to move on to uh, the next step of what I've done uh, now that I've got this information Okay, 
So you may have remembered seeing this before if you've seen my previous video. Uh, it's a card that I believe I got this on Amazon.com. It's called a Grayscale and Value Finder. And it goes from white to black and then it has the various gray tones from white to black. So you can see just the shade just gets darker and darker. And then it uses a value system where the value for white is 10 and the value for black is 1 where black would be 100% and then of course white would be 0 but in reality um, black is really 0 and white is 100 when you're using um, like the, the Photoshop. Now this here uh, if you look really close is dirty it's got speckles on it and uh, that's because I ended up getting spray over on it and so what, what I did is I scanned this into my computer and then I loaded it up into Photoshop and then while in Photoshop I used that uh, color picker tool that you saw me use on Robert Downey Jr's uh, photo and I located the clean areas with the eyedropper clicked it got the value and then painted over it within the program itself so that I would have a nice clean tone area as you can see here and just on the outside of it you can see the little speckles where I didn't paint so you can see how I really cleaned it up and so now I've got pure white for zero and pure black for um, for pure white for 100 and pure black for zero here and you can see then it goes down all the way down here and this I did it on uh, high quality photo paper glossy photo paper you can see the shine coming off of it because that is exactly the same paper that I print out my reference photos that I'm drawing from so I wanted an exact uh, the same exact material, the same light reflection, everything, so that I can do an exact comparison of the tones on this card to the tones on the photo itself. Can you see right here? So as you can see, here's the photo, and I use the same paper, the same printer settings, everything was identical. That way I can reference exactly whatever tone I want here based on whatever tones I see here. I wanted to be able to get a one for one. Now the next question is however is how do you translate the tone from here to here to an actual pencil? And normally that's really not a concern. I mean that's getting down to the finite because what you really want to know is whether this area is darker than this area, is darker than this area, is lighter than this area. And then whatever you choose as your darkest dark, you will just shade down from that all the way to the paper being your whitest white. You don't have to be exact uh, from here to here. It just, as long as, if this is darker than this, when you're done, this needs to be darker than this, period. Whether you end up with a 2B here and a, and a 2H here, or whether you end up with a 4B here and a 2B here or a B, it's irrelevant as long as this ends up being X number of shades darker than here. I hope that makes sense. Everything needs to be relative to the areas around it. So if you want to get, let's say you want to draw something that is exactly like this, I mean exact tones, well then you're going to need to translate what this darkness is to the actual pencil that you will use. And for the sake of those who want to do that and are still practicing with how to see tones and so forth, uh, which I continue to practice because it's just your eyes play tricks on you as I had already demonstrated um, then you know you'll want to um, 
make up something like this, make it easy for you, and uh, you're definitely going to uh, want to learn, okay, what kind of pencil do I need for this and that. So let me show you how I went from this to determining the pencils to use for each one of these. You may recall that I created my own little tonal chart here. You see this is where I took the paper. This paper here is the drawing paper that I'm using for my portraits. And taking the exact paper that I'm going to use for my portraits, I lay down shades using the pencils that I draw with. So from here you have 4H and then this is 4H and then blended. The blended is always on the bottom here because that's what I normally do. I normally blend and I want to get make sure I get the right tone by blending and it goes all the way to 12B. So I have pencils from 4H to 12B. Now to translate these pencils to this here, for example, I'm going to need this printed on this paper so that this is equal to this. And that is what I did here. So here you can see I made a scan of my original. Convert it to grayscale because pencil isn't really gray, it's graphite-ish. And this is more grayish. You can see that it is different. You might say gray is kind of a color <laughs> and uh, graphite not so much. But if you'll notice, graphite is purely toned. And so what I needed to do is once I... I projected this onto my computer, scanned it into my computer. I put it in Photoshop, went in with Photoshop and would scan with that little color picker the dark areas in there and then I would paint it. And so I took it on each one and painted it because this was representative of that that blended area and you can see that it gives me a nice gray scale and this gray scale corresponds to this gray scale so by simply putting my color picker on each one of these here in the program I get a value like from the L or B value that I showed you before I get a value and what I'm going to do here, for example, is I'm going to plot the values down here. Now, another thing that I did was I went ahead and did the pencil thing again without blending. So here you can see the 4H, very light, then it gets darker with 2H, HB. Now, the difference between this one and this one is that these are the pencils that I currently have on my pencil rack that I'm using that are labeled 4H all the way to 12B and then I have my carbon and charcoal and everything else there as well. And so these are not the same brand. These are all different brands. Some of these are uh, Tombos, some are uh, Stadler uh, Lumographs. Uh, this one, this 4H here, I can't remember where that came out of one of the cheap pencil sets that um, the overall set I didn't like but I was I decided to use the 4H pencil but you can see that it is an even increment of grade so I can use it for my drawing just fine however it just wasn't one brand and you're gonna find when you're mixing brands that they don't have the same shades a 2H from one brand doesn't necessarily is not necessarily going to be the same tone as a 2H from a different brand. And quite possibly you might even come across situations where different batches of the same brand uh, there may be minor tonal differences. So these are things that you know you just kind of have to get used to. So this one here is these are all Mitsubishi high unis. 
or unis, however you want to call it. I call it unis, but you know. Anyway, uh, these are my Mitsubishi pencil set that goes from 10H to 10B. It's, I mean, there's a lot of pencils there. And I just used the 4H, 2H, HB, 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B, 10B. I think in this area here, it's kind of overkill. Going beyond 6B, you know, it's like once I get to 6B, I pretty much jump into a 9X, XB. Uh, I don't find it necessarily necessary to use 3H or a B maybe with a 2B. I don't need a 3B. I don't need a 5B or a 7B, you know, 9B. Yeah. So I skip every other one, and, and I, for the most part, I cover most of my ranges right right here up to 6B, and then I go right to the 9XXB, but you see I have that there. I also put the uh, 2H charcoal pencil, that extra hard uh, charcoal pencil, and then you have a, a Primo, which is a really dark, soft, black charcoal pencil, and then here's a, a pure carbon, okay, pencil that just does black, black. I also added a couple other ones that were technically black pencils um, on different kind of paper. This is the 90 pound paper I got from Amazon, so it's, a, it's different than my drawing paper, which will affect my final result if I'm doing exact uh, one to one. But I, I wanted to use something different, and the Geoconda Negro uh, doesn't really come out as dark as I'm able to get it with the different paper because I once compared the 9XXB to this uh, Geo, Geoconda and uh, the Geoconda appeared to me to be darker but that is now a myth uh, the 9XXB is definitely darker and also the um, sort of the Pr Prismacolor Call Erase pencil my black color pencil well that's about as black as it gets on this paper too. So I scanned this, but what I did was I took my value finder and uh, put them together like this and scanned it so that they would be in relation to each other with the same scan. And so if I do any kind of contrast adjustments or whatever, uh, they both will adjust equally. And I ended up with this right here. Okay, so if you'll see, I have the uh, grades here that I use by uh, shading, and I have the va value finder uh, also printed on the same paper. And this here, I would not use this, you know, this to compare to to the different grades because this is copy paper. But what I did is I wanted this as a reference because if you look real close, I went and I cut out a little bit or I copied a section of each one of these and then I went and put it across the tops of these to see which one of these grades it came close to. And you can see the 4H slightly darker than white which is obvious but it didn't quite make it to value 9. A 2H is in there pretty much for the value 9. An HB came out slightly darker than the value 8 but wasn't dark enough for value 7. The 2B fell pretty good in, in value 6. The 4B fell pretty good into value 5. The 6B fell into value 4. 8B didn't quite make the value 3. It was part way between the two, so I put it there. The 10B was pretty much in the value 3 area. The 2H charcoal also fell in the same area as the 10B. Uh, I did not find the 2H charcoal to be as black as the 9XXB is. You can see 9XXB actually came out darker than the 2H charcoal from Generals. They're both from Generals. Uh, 9XB fell right into value 2. The Primo and the Carbon were right in the black, black zone right here. So this is kind of a quick reference for me that if I was to use my value finder on the reference photo and I've determined that an area you know is for example uh, value 4 well I can quickly just look at my little reference sheet here value 4 and say well maybe I should start using my 6B pencil to uh, get that uh, tone on my drawing and so that's what I've done with that 
Uh, and I find that to be really, really a nice reference to have. But you know, again, this is more an academic lesson in tonal value than it is uh, as actual tools. I mean, I, I did do this because I'm gonna, you know, I could play around with it. I could instantly see what pencil to use. But for the most part, when I'm drawing, uh, I'm looking at relativity. In other words, I'm looking at the darkness of this compared to this. Not so much that this is tone value four and this is tone value five, but this, you know, for example, is lighter than this. And so when I'm done with my final product, I'm going to make sure that it is lighter than here. Um, but as far as the degree of darkness and so forth, that's, that's all up to the, the artist. It's all up to you, what you want it to be. But, you know, if you're going to go for, like, you want it to be exactly like the photograph, uh, like the girl on the wall drawing that I had showed, um, then, you know, you're going to want to hit these tones about as spot on as you can. And here's one way you can probably, you know, use this to to make sure, well, okay, it, did I get that in the right degree, and then go from there. So I think that those are uh, suggestions you can use. Anyway, so that does it for this lesson on tonal values. I hope you learned something from it. I hope these little tricks, the use of uh, Photoshop or a, a editing program for your photographs uh, was a good idea for you. Uh, if if so, please let me know down in the description, uh, the comments below, excuse me. Uh, if you think it's, you know, not something you'd want to do or you have other comments, please leave comments below. Um, I read every one of them. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I think it's a very cool subject uh, to discuss. So thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if... Uh, you're so uh, inclined to do so. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Click the bell and I will see you in the next video.